Oh, very good, very good. Uh, sorry you couldn't find me, man. I I searched for myself and I couldn't find me, which was weird. <laughs> so. No sweat. I'm new enough to Skype that the. Uh, I'm sure part of it was my fault. Okay, yeah, I'll have to I'll have to look check that out, see what's going on. But uh, how's it going today, man? Pretty good. It's hot here in LA. Is it really? What's the temp out there, man? Uh, it's got to be in the upper 80s to 90s. Oh, really? Okay. Good stuff, good stuff. At least you don't need, you know, like a fur coat or anything. No. <laughs> oh, man. Well, thanks for coming out, man. I appreciate it. Oh, of course. It's good to good to talk with you and stuff. And, uh, yeah, I guess we can just get to some interview stuff, huh? I mean... Yeah, hey. Oh, I should also ask you, is it cool if I record our conversation? Is that... I mean, yeah, just, yeah, just go for, the, for it. Is the, um, is the AC in the background too much of a disturbance? Uh, no, I can't hear anything in the background on your end, man. Okay, good. So you should cool. be good, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm Dustin. I'll be interviewing you today. And you're the new lead voice actor on Lost Planet 3, right? I am indeed. And I'm sure everyone wants to talk to you about that, but I'm sure we can get to that in a minute. Uh, oh, yeah. let's, let's talk about some other cool stuff instead. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I went through a lot of um, random like Facebook stuff. Like uh, you're in a band, right? Um, yeah, I am. Uh, the Greg Feldon band. That's pretty cool. I, uh, yeah, it's a hillbilly band with a, an old friend of mine who's actually also an actor. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, I, I listened to the music this morning. I had it on loop when I was coming up with questions for you, and uh, <laughs> it sounded really good. I usually don't like, um, you know, like uh, anything with like a country feel to it, but I really, I, I really enjoyed it. Actually, it was, it was pretty cool. And, uh, nice. He's, and, uh, he's gonna love to hear that. I think he's got, you know, he's he's a singer songwriter, which can always be problematic, especially for someone like me who likes punk rock and and stuff that's a bit more visceral. Right. Yeah. But um, he actually has something to say and has found a, a genuine way to communicate it. And I think he sings in his own voice. You know, he's not putting on some sort of lead singer voice. He's really communicating directly. Sure, yeah. Yeah, I watched the, uh, he has a video up on his Facebook, and I watched that when you guys were playing in that. I, I take it it was possibly a small bar, right? Oh, um, probably the small <laughs> bar. Great, like, legendary Americana venue on the nice. west side of L.A. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. And I actually, for some reason, I thought you played guitar until I watched that, and you played bass guitar, right? Yeah, yeah, I haven't so. really, uh, I mean, I can I can bang around on the guitar, but it was it was always the bass that I started with the bass and stuck with it. Nice, nice. So how many years have you been playing bass? I started in high school. Oh, really? Okay, nice, nice. Yeah, I don't really feel like doing the math because I don't want to bum myself out. Yeah, but, we, we, you know, we, we, time. <laughs> yeah we, won't, we won't go there. We won't go there. <laughs> say that. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Uh, so you, do you play in any other bands or anything like that, or is it just that one band that you're in right now? I don't. Um, I was doing music exclusively well before I, I turned to acting. And I was in three, sometimes even four bands at once. Oh, wow. Okay. And I miss it all the time, but now my, my acting career is actually busy enough that it's hard to incorporate even just the one band in terms of scheduling and conflicts and stuff like that. Oh, sure, sure. I believe it. Um, I definitely, I'd like to do something, nothing against the Felden band, but I would like to do something that's, you know, a little angrier. Uh, right. I like, <laughs> to, I like to burn it down. A little faster? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, so. Um you know, we'll see. I, I got plenty of musician friends. I'm always in, in contact with people. And, and when acting was slower a couple of years ago, I was auditioning here and there for, for tours and stuff. So my mind's always open about it. Okay, cool. Cool, man. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, do you have any favorite bands that you take inspiration from? I came to punk rock late in life. Um, okay. I sort of had... My 20s, I found to be sort of very frustrating and very kind of lonely and then uh, and I was living uh, I was living in Europe and I didn't have a visa to be there and it was just sort of a very frustrating time oh, no. uh, and I moved home and shortly after I moved home my father passed away and I just got really oh, angry really fast sure, uh, sure yeah. that's when I happened to meet a bunch of guys who were putting together a Pogues tribute band you know the Pogues yeah absolutely dude absolutely <laughs> yeah so uh, through them I mean these guys are covered in in tattoos and wearing sleeveless shirts and you know <laughs> spitting on each other at the stage and everything. So through that, I finally found punk rock. You know, I finally found the Clash and the Dolls, uh, Johnny Thunders, um, 
uh, the Velvets, Elvis Costello's first couple records. Oh wow, nice. Okay. And that's that that stuff really gets me going. Right now, I'm on a huge. Uh, this may be a part of the midlife crisis, but I'm on a huge <laughs> early '90s hip hop kick. Oh, okay, nice, dude. Very nice. Like, Very cannot nice. get enough of uh, <laughs> Bushnickens, Far Side, <laughs> Native Tongue Family, Black Sheep. Nice. Uh, nice. So you know, I, ne- I never actually had uh, the Chronic back in the day, um, but I'm listening to that a lot now. I okay. just love, I just love big beats. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Especially in your car, right? If you have good speakers yeah. in there, it sounds great. Yeah, <laughs> any bass player, any bass player just wants to hear drums. Yeah, yeah. The hip hop, nothing against the hip hop that's coming out now. There's, there's interesting production, but it doesn't sound like drums. And I just want to hear, I just want to hear cymbals and hi hats and, and bass drums. Yeah, as opposed as opposed to just like studio, uh, you know, Stumps. prefab stuff. Yeah. yeah, thumps and grinds, which are great on a dance floor, but I I, I want to hear the I want to hear the beat. Yeah, yeah. I want to hear it coming from a kit. Yeah, <laughs> and it's pretty easy to tell the difference too. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, so I checked as well. Uh, your birthday's in what, like five days, right? And coming you, up, a big one. Nice. Do you have anything crazy planned, man, or? Uh, I'm thinking of going to the uh, the shooting range, uh, <laughs> popping off a few rounds, and then getting sausages and Belgian beers at this German place down by me downtown in L.A. Nice, nice. I don't know, that just sounds like fun to me. That, no, that does sound like a good time, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not some like I'm not some gun toting freak. I uh, I've only shot once or twice, but it's fun, man. I don't know what to say. It's oh, fun. absolutely. No, I agree, man. I agree totally. It's it, it can be a good time for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, and I was also on your what uh, IMBD page. Um, yeah. I watched some of your demo reels, and I was dude, I was dying this morning. I watched your um, your comedy one, and oh my goodness, you have that one where you play the surgeon, right? And you're like, right. uh, oh, I need that's a, a, that's a classic. Uh, it's it's a, it has a handle. I, oh that's a classic. That was oh. a college friend of mine um, from Brown was doing a series of, of really bizarre spots for Norton Antivirus. Okay. And I got to work on him with on a couple of them, and he's just got such a warped sense of humor. <laughs> yeah. class. I know. <laughs> I was laughing so hard. You have blood on your hands. You're like, ah, oh, I know. Ah, it's got to... <laughs> That was. Friend of oh. mine's wife is a nurse who has, who actually has, I don't know, it's not pathological, but she has a very severe fear of um, bloodborne disease. Oh, she, no. She could not make it through that when I put my bloody <laughs> hands in my mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So that was fun then, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, lo- I love doing comedy. I don't necessarily. I and mean, so much of on-camera work is based on your look, and you just have to you have to go with the role that fits the look, and go with the look that fits the role. I don't necessarily look funny; like I don't look like I would be funny. So I don't, <laughs> I don't get to do as much comedy as I might like, but it's it's always such a blast. Yeah. Although there, sure. I gotta say, there's a lot of humor in um, there's a lot of humor in Lost Planet. I mean, we found we found some real nice moments. Yeah, I saw some clips of that as well uh, on your page, and that was that was pretty good. Like uh, when that girl has a rifle to the back of your character, and she's like, "You know, oh, where'd you come from?" Yeah, and you're like, uh, "I came with the guy with the big head." You know, nobody likes you know that guy. <laughs> yeah, that was straight up. That was straight up Wild West stuff. That was fun. Oh yeah, that that was cool. That was cool. Um, I think that I'm excited just to watch some more um, just footage of that game so far. It should be pretty cool. Um, yeah, I get to sit with the guys at Spark and watch almost all the cutscenes in a row and it just it's so cinematic I mean you could just I think there's plenty of stuff that's not going to make it in the game because we shot a lot but you could just sit and watch the string of the cinematics and really get I, I mean it's, it's it's nearly a film okay cool cool that's excellent that's excellent Are you, do you know if uh, Lost Planet 3 is going to have any like outtake reels or anything like that deleted scenes anything uh, I've seen uh, the meet Here's a couple of the things in the Corona's diary, a couple of okay. the communications back to the wife, and some other little moments that I that I remember shooting on the stage are popping up as YouTube clips on the um, Corona's diary. So oh, I know okay. I, I think they're not letting it go to waste. Oh, cool! But I don't I don't know as far as I actually don't know what didn't make the cut and what did. Okay. Okay. Um, and if that stuff will be available, I think. Plot-wise, everything that we shot 
still linearly fits. Uh, I think it might just be condensing some things here and there. Oh, okay. Good stuff. That's cool. Because it's, I know it must be a shame when you shoot this really great scene and it doesn't make it into the final cut. You're like, oh, that was one of my favorites, right? And it didn't, it didn't make it in. Yeah, but. yeah, that's one of the biggest frustrations of, of this career, unless you're producing something yourself to be in. Yeah, I've shot, I shot a commercial that was spectacular with makeup and special effects and yeah. tons of improv, and it was, you know, I walked off set with just swelling with pride, and it never aired. No one ever oh, saw it. <laughs> dang it. You know, which not not only means do you not get to showcase your work, but you also don't get the paycheck. So. Oh yeah, that sucks. You man. know, it's a, it's. Oh. I I'm not in a position to complain because I'm making a living doing what I love, but you definitely That's have true. to learn to, to let go and just enjoy the actual doing of it because the outcome could be anything. You know, there's a, the yeah. outcome could be anything. As it is, Lost Planet's coming out, and I have an action figure, and I'm over the moon. But it could just have easily have been. <laughs> Yeah, we decided excellent. to recast, or you know, um, target numbers make us think that we shouldn't release this game, and, and then you're like, "Well, that was all for nothing." <laughs> oh no! Yeah, I know, right? That... Oh, jeez. So you just can't. Uh, That's crazy. You just have to enjoy the doing of it, and anything else just becomes a bonus. Yeah. Nice, nice. All right. Uh, oh, I was also checking out some other stuff, and it, it looks like you did um, a lot of motion capture for the game as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the cutscenes were done in the mocap, or I don't know if I can say all, but I think the majority of the cutscenes were done in the mocap suit and played out in full. Okay, with cool, the, cool. With the whole cast together, and then I had done maybe three straight months, six days a week, like around the clock, um, on *Elle Noir* a couple of years back. Oh wow. Like, wow! Playing a bunch of different characters, like as many as a dozen characters a day. Jeez, holy oh, cow! Nice. Yeah, I yeah, saw so that I, you were on Ellie. Cap suit for, for a, a whole season. Well, <laughs> so you got pretty familiar with it, I guess, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a second skin. I I love it. I if I could get up every morning and go put that thing on, I'd be over <laughs> the moon. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, did you do a lot of um, work with uh, like I lost plan? Did you do a lot of like weapon work, or maybe even in L.A. Noir as well? Did you handle a lot of a like? Ton. Yeah, because I was I. One day I played a sniper, I played the guy the sniper shot, and then I played the cop who shot the sniper. Oh, what? Oh, my gosh. But we also did, all, so it was, you know, cops and robbers, but we also did all the World War II stuff. Um, okay. And they had fully weighted shotguns and rifles, and um, so you could really, I mean, the, the, the technology is so sensitive that you have to have the weight in your hands, or it, it won't look right. So they had oh, fully yeah. weighted weaponry on, on, on both shoots, actually. Oh, wow, um, that's cool. There's that one moment in Lost Planet I'm particularly proud of. It's, uh, I don't know if it's in the final game, if it was for one of the demos or not, but Jim's just sort of talking about his first few months on the planet and, and how he was adjusting. And there's a scene, the voiceover, and, and, and during it you're seeing him take out a couple acres with a pistol, and then he spins it and holsters it. Oh, nice, yeah. Uh, and we did that live, and they weren't expecting me to spin it. They were just like, Get, you know, you're on your knees, you're planning the, the mining thing, and then you see these two acre and you take them out. Uh, so I took them out and did the twirl and got a round of applause afterwards. Oh, so in the game. yes. Oh, my goodness. I hope it's in the final game. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I know it was in – I mean, I've seen it on YouTube. I know it was in some of the gameplay footage that was out there, but I just don't – I don't know what the actual final cut was okay. all about. But, wow. yeah, you it, it's really – Props go a long way when you don't have, you know, you don't have the scenery and you're not shooting on a location. Props go a long way to give you a grounded reality to work from. Yeah, because I'm sure they didn't have any accurate on the on the set or anything, right? Did they just have like, you know, essentially pieces of paper with an X on it? Like these are horrible monsters, you know, something yep. like that, or yeah. <laughs> Tennis balls at the end of poles. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, just just random random stuff. Uh, the the best prop they had was the cockpit for the rig they had oh, like nice. a big office chair and it was on a platform and then the platform could be placed on top of inner tubes oh wow so if the rig was getting banged around crew members could hop up and down on the on the platform and the inner tubes would make it jostle like crazy so that was wow. fun wow that's awesome that is so cool yeah that was really fun i'm sure somewhere oh. there's i mean i know they were taking video of the actual motion capture stage the whole time yeah. So, so someone could definitely put together a, a, a behind the scenes that 
that would crack a few smiles. That would be cool. I'll have to see. Maybe they already have it up, and I didn't see it. That'd be that'd be uh pretty neat. But all right. Um, do you play? Um, I know you're an actor and, and you're in a band. Do you have any time, or do you play video games? Do you pl play I anything? I got or? PS3, and I got Uncharted 3 with it. I got the package. Oh, okay. And I know story wise, Uncharted is right up my alley. I just haven't True. had a chance to really dig in. Um, it's weird. There's <laughs> there's just no structure in an actor's life. There's no, it's not nine to five. You're really busy and not busy and you never know when you're gonna have free time. And uh, you're always trying to keep track of so many things. You always have 10, 10 balls up in the air and that's just your acting life, let alone your personal life and all the other things you're trying to accomplish sure. outside of the world of acting. And I. I just haven't gotten it together to, to dig in. I got, this will make you roll your eyes, I got an Atari oh, 2600. Oh, nice <laughs> um, though. No, that's good. <laughs> from a vintage shop back in Cleveland when I was home uh, around Christmas. So I, I have been playing that um, just because it's, there's nothing to learn. I know that stuff like the back of my hand because I grew up with it. But sure, yeah. Um, I haven't, I haven't gotten my, feet wet yet in the new the new generations there's games I, I i want to play mainly because i want to see the stories unfold oh sure yeah absolutely um it's just a matter of getting my game i have, I have friends who are avid gamers oh yeah uh, <laughs> way ahead of the curve and uh it's just a matter of getting them to come over and uh and be patient with me <laughs> oh yeah right <laughs> yeah, if you guys are playing multiplayer or anything like that i mean yeah uh, exactly well, plus, I mean, yeah, between the Atari and the and the next gen games, there's it's a lot different. Of course, it's it's a lot different. Yeah, so. I missed a few steps along the way. <laughs> I have to say, I don't I don't remember if, what happened. I don't know if I was out of the country or uh, if I joined a sports team or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. I just know there was a chunk there where a few it, it got it took a big leap in how complicated the controllers were, and I was just left in the dust. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Especially nowadays. Jeez. It's. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Some games there's not even enough buttons on the controller for the game, you know, you have to do all this other stuff, but... Right. <laughs> oh, man. So with this uh, uh, lead part that you have on uh, Lost Planet, how did you get that? Did you just um, basically just kind of show up and, uh, you know, act something out for them, or how, how did all that go down? They... The, the full timeline is Spark um, and Capcom... We're talking about Capcom was looking for a Western developer. Spark pitched their take on Lost Planet, and uh, if I remember this right, um, their priority, Spark's priority, was we got to go back to the snow and ice and how brutal those conditions were. Right. And that's exactly what Capcom wanted to hear. So Capcom funded Spark uh, for a demo, and they cert they they just put an online submission up. I actually just called up the submission on, on my computer uh, this morning. Oh. Um, I think it was 2011, maybe 2010 actually. Uh, 2010, I think. It was just a video game demo, and you could submit online your your photo. And I submitted the, a, a photo and sort of an explanation of all the work I'd done in LA Noir, so they knew I was comfortable doing motion capture. Cool. Um, yeah. And then they sent me a monologue and said, "Put put yourself on tape reading this monologue." And it's it was Jim's voice from the get go. Like it was all there, all the all the characteristics of Jim that are in the game now were in that first monologue. Oh, wow. um, and I think it was even used almost almost verbatim in the original E3 demo two years ago. Okay, nice. Um, it, you know, that whole, like, I never was a greedy man, never cared much about money. It was all that kind of thing. Hmm. Um, and uh, so I did the self-tape monologue. They called me into their studios. Uh, and I did the monologue again in the voiceover booth. Um and got the demo. We shot the demo over, I think, maybe two days, two days in mocap suit and one or two days in the VO booth, and they put it together for Capcom. Very different look um, than it is now. They weren't doing photorealistic motion capture. They weren't using the helmet cameras. They actually okay. had it almost anime, like slightly anime style. Um, and it looked great. It was a gorgeous demo. The Spark guys brought us into the studios to show us the completed demo. Um, and it looked fantastic, and Capcom was really happy with it. This is three years ago, and yeah. uh, and they went ahead and greenlit Spark to to make the game. And all along the way, you know, I was just in touch with them here and there. Um, I know they were casting around to find a gym. 
Um, they weren't initially sold on me as the main guy. Oh, and wow. then uh, uh, when they started coming up with the the pre-visualizations and the, the character sketches, it just happened to kind of be my, my face and body type. Um, I mean, a little, a little thicker than me. I'm pretty wiry, but uh, <laughs> but it was very much my kind of character. You know, like I was saying yeah. earlier about you have to go with the look. It was sure. my look. So they brought me back to, I think, to the original monologue again, and they recorded me on video doing that. And at the time, I had, like, the full gym beard. Like, I had a full, thick beard. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> which just, I think, helped sell it. So then when they knew they wanted to do photorealism, they already knew they liked my voice performance, and then they saw that the face would work as well and match up with, with their concept of who and what Jim was. Um, they finally pulled the trigger, and I got to be the guy. Oh, that is awesome, man. That is awesome. Jeez. Yeah, it's been a long, it's been a long road. I guess. Wow. Because yeah, did they actually have um like uh, face rigs while you were doing mocap so that it yeah uh, basically like basically that is your face almost yeah. in the game, right? We had a we had a helmet with a camera attached to the front <laughs> of our faces. We had microphones, um, and then the mocap suit. So it was a full face, voice, and body. All was happening live. Wow! So the cutscenes, the cutscenes are exactly the same as we performed them as an ensemble together on set. Like there, we didn't. There's no editing. There's no going back and punching in. It mm -hmm. was all done live. Wow! Wow! That is really cool. That's really cool. So yeah, it's... and I think it shows. I really do. I mean, you can, you can tell. It, it, well, I can tell anyway. Looking at a game, <laughs> I can tell when two actors aren't in the same room at the same time. Sure. And they're just saying their lines because they're not necessarily reacting naturally to one another. Even if the deliveries are great, um, the reactions don't always match up because they weren't in the same room together. But all these cut scenes are, you know, actors playing out a scene from beginning to end and and hitting it. Wow, that's cool. That's because I was watching. Um, I watched a couple of trailers. And I had seen a couple pictures of you um, when I was coming up with my questions and all that stuff, and I'm like, that kind of looks like that looks like Bill. That's crazy. And, uh, yeah. So oh, it's, a, it's a freak out. So it's the first, <laughs> the first time I saw it, I was I was lit. Wow, that's cool. That's really cool. So you had a lot of fun then, right? Uh, shooting everything and just going through. And uh, was it just a three month process? I mean, six days a week. Um, they did it, um, to get all that no, stuff? No, that was or? L.A. Noir. Did, L.A. Noir did the whole thing at Oh, once. I got you. Okay, uh, okay. Lost Planet did it very differently. They sort of did it in, in chapters. Uh, um, and we would do one or two days in a row, and then we wouldn't do it again for another month. Then we'd do another two days in a row, and then a month later do another two days in a row. Hmm. So it was it was it was different. I mean, I loved I loved the grind of Ellie Noir and and really getting really tight with everyone because we were together around the clock. But it was also nice to have this space out and always know I had this to look forward to. Yeah, absolutely. And then we did a lot in the voiceover booth too, separately. Oh, okay. Is it? Um, so it was really it was really peppered out throughout the year. Okay, that's that's still pretty cool though. Yeah. The. Was it kind of? Do you find it's like kind of hard to get in character sometimes after you haven't necessarily done that for a month, or is it pretty much like riding a bike every time you came back? It's like riding a bike. I actually just did voiceover yesterday for a new trailer, and oh, nice. I was standing in the booth, you know, just scratching my head, waiting for the <laughs> session to start. And as soon as I said the first line, I just had that sort of Jim Payton weight of the world on my shoulders, semi irritated, semi amused <laughs> sarcasm. It was just right there. That's awesome. That's really great. <laughs> and I, I have to say, a lot of that is the writing. Like, you look at the line, you're like, well, how the hell else would I say it? But, like, Peyton would say it, you know? Because yeah. they, just, they just found they found a voice for that character on the page. Nice. And they stuck with it. They were consistent with it. Oh, okay. Did you have any room to do any uh, improv in any of the chapters or anything? Or is it just mostly um, on the page for you? Yeah, we got a couple moments in there. Um the actor who plays Gale, uh, Daniel Kuntz, he actually was also involved in the demo process from the very beginning. Wow. So we had, had, by the time we were shooting the final scenes, we'd known each other for years. Um, hmm. And that, of all the relationships, that's the one that lent itself the most to sort of 
being sort of off the cuff and in the moment and giving each, giving each other a hard time because it's got this <laughs> big brother little brother vibe. Yeah. Uh, and I know there are at least two moments that we improvised, both comedic, that um, did end up in the game. Nice. But you know, if we, there's the cutscene. You you can't be too gratuitous in the cutscenes. There's a lot of information to get across, and it it is a video game and not a movie. So the you know the player. The player wants his information and wants to get back to action, so you can only sure. you can only screw around so much. But there was, you know, there were some very some very human moments in there that that happened spontaneously on this on the set. Nice, that's really cool. <laughs> that's cool. When you have a little bit of freedom, you know that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. I never felt uh, I never felt constrained. The guys were always looking for moments, you know, true true moments of connection between people. So I, you know you. You never felt like you couldn't say or do something. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. So it's a comfortable environment then. That's that's good. Very, yeah. I mean, at the same time, we had 20 plus pages of dialogue to get through in one day. So Oh, geez, yeah. <laughs> you, had, you had to stay super focused and you knew you knew you couldn't screw around. You know, like if, if yeah. something came to you, you felt free to go with it, but you couldn't. You know, a lot of times improvising, you just you go off the rails and you go in bizarre directions just to see what comes out and we didn't mm -hmm. we didn't have that kind of time so it was okay. mainly just sort of a button or a tag at the end of a scene or just an offhand remark or something like that or an unexpected reaction it was more that kind of stuff but they definitely put us in a comfortable place where we we felt we could be playful oh nice nice did you uh how many hours a day did you shoot did you like eight or ten like did your voice get sore or anything like that Voice didn't get sore brain got sore I think it was usually we we're on set by eight and I think we wrapped by six. Oh wow! Um, okay. Um, but it's just at a certain point, especially being the lead guy, it's just so much dialogue, um, and your 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 met your brain your brain can only hold so much of it in. So a lot of times I'd, I'd be I'd make sure I was prepared on the first three or four scenes, and then just trust that I had to get the other ones as the day went on because I couldn't memorize twenty pages. Sure. Um, you know, all at once, and every once in a while, um, you know, it was like, "Oh, hey, did you get the new version of this scene?" And I was like, "Nope." <laughs> so you know, yeah, it was good oh, to no. be ready to be quick and on your on your toes, and and to be ready to memorize at the last minute, so that you know you weren't too locked into your way of doing things because things would change and stuff would happen on the fly. I... Huh? That's also still pretty cool, though. I mean, it's a uh, you you certainly wouldn't get bored, I guess, right? <laughs> no, no, never. The days were always. You just couldn't wait. You had no idea what was going to happen. You couldn't wait. And every once in a while, you know, a stunt would be thrown here or there, or um, just something you weren't expecting that wasn't necessarily in the in the dialogue that they emailed you the day before, and that that always broke it up and made it really fun. Yeah, yeah, nice. As far as the story goes, I know you probably can't give away uh, much of anything, really, uh, but. Do you think there'll be another uh, sequel to this game that you can play the lead character in that as well? Uh, does the story kind of lend itself to that, or they've? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to be very political in this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, things that I'm not allowed to let other people know. Um, yes, absolutely. I think they've set it up. I'll say yes. I'll say yes. They have okay. set it up the way that the story, the story of the prequel, does carry on. It doesn't go directly into Lost Planet Two. There is there's still a bridge between the events of Lost Planet 3 and the events of Lost Planet 1 where there's ample room for storytelling. Oh, okay, cool. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Uh, is there anything cool you want to say about Lost Planet before we head out here? Or any any favorite moments or any anything like that? Or I just... I'm just so proud of it. I'm really excited to see what people think. I think it's so grounded and so easy to get invested in these characters because they are very human. Um, you know, you play a game because you feel like, hey, it's me in the game. Oh, and yeah, I absolutely. We literally do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But it's also like, for, the, for the player, I think this character, all these characters actually, the whole the whole world is inhabited by people who you can you can relate to you can say I know someone like that or I'd love to meet someone like that or that 
that reminds me of this guy I know at work. You know, it, it just has this sort of day-to-day aspect to it that then makes the the action and the adventure and the aliens and the battles, uh, the stakes become so much higher because you don't go in jumping out of a plane as a Marine. You go in being like, ah, another day at the office. Yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a bot. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It just gives it the uh, it gives it a a realism that makes that throws the stakes through the roof, which which I think is very engaging. Nice, nice. Uh, yeah, it sounds fantastic, and the game looks great so far as well. So um, you're probably gonna be able to see a review of it on Realm of Gaming as well uh, a couple weeks after the game comes out, if you're interested, of course. And um... oh yeah, please, <laughs> please, I've, I've got a Google alert set so that I can read up on on all the different takes, you know, good and bad on. Um, the yeah, expectations and reactions to, to Lost Planet. It's you know, it's been three years of my life, and and it's my face. <laughs> so I'm I, yeah. I don't hear what I hear what people have to say. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's pretty. Uh, yeah, it's pretty dear to your heart, I would imagine. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I very mean, much so. And you know, I'm not precious about it. Like I don't, I don't take it personally. To people who don't respond, but it does. It just does mean a lot to be a part of a project that has such a wide reach and has a passionate fan base and. You know, good or bad, has people talking about it and reacting to it. That's a that's a very exciting thing to be a part of. Yeah, absolutely. And I know there's already a ton of pre-orders for it, so there's going to oh, be. Oh, good. A, good. I actually hadn't checked in in a while to see what the status was on that. That's good to hear. Yeah, there should be a yeah. bunch, man. So, yeah, it should be great. It should be uh, really great. But awesome. Well, thanks for coming by today, man. I, uh, oh, anytime. You know, My pleasure entirely. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, well, hopefully we can interview you again, maybe sometime soon about you know other projects or something like that. And uh, yeah, stay in touch. Stay in touch. I'm around for sure. Awesome, awesome. That's awesome. fantastic, man. All right. Well, thanks again, man. Have a great day. Try not to get too hot out there, okay? <laughs> you bet. I may just go to the beach just for kicks. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, take care, man, and hopefully we'll talk to you again soon. For sure. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. See you, man. See ya.